Hey there, what's going on? Welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 46, entitled Azure Advanced Threat Protection. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain begins with the functional group Describe Security, Privacy, and Trust, passes through Describe Security Tools and Features of Azure, and ultimately our granular skill is Describe Azure Advanced Threat Protection, also called ATP. As you know by now, I'm quite sure, you can go to timw.info forward slash az900sg to get the full table of contents for this guide. Let's get started. As you know, if you've been with me in other training videos, I always like to place a lesson in a real-world context. Here, the use case for Azure Advanced Threat Protection is actually Windows Server Active Directory. So consider that your business is using a local Active Directory domain environment for computer accounts, user accounts, authentication, authorization, and you want to do what you can to prevent the cyber attack kill chain. A kill chain is a series of steps that an attacker will use to compromise your network. Specifically, it normally goes in the pattern of first reconnaissance, where an attacker attempts to footprint your network to get a shape of what it looks like, and then attempt to break in, brute force, a credential. There are various methods for this, like password spray, dictionary attacks, etc. The attacker can get hold of any kind of a credential, preferably a high privilege one, they then can perform lateral movement throughout your Active Directory domain and access privileged resources that should only be accessible to authorized parties. Ultimately, the kill chain terminates in domain dominance, and that's a terrible day indeed if your Active Directory has been owned by an attacker from data theft to data deletion. The list goes on from there. Now, Azure Advanced Threat Protection, or Azure ATP, is where we can leverage the Microsoft Public Cloud. It's a cloud-based solution that you use to monitor and profile your Windows Server Active Directory, or local AD, the official name is Active Directory Domain Services. Monitors and profiles user behavior and activities and will alert you of anomalies. The net effect of advanced threat protection is that it reduces your local Active Directory's attack surface. There's simply less there for an attacker to take advantage of. What can be a little bit confusing, honestly, is that Azure ATP is just one of a number of advanced threat protection products. It's called Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection. And before I do the brief demo, I want to explain those other components just to make sure you're aware. All right, so the Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection family consists of a number of interrelated but separate and separately priced software as a service applications. There's Microsoft Defender ATP. If you're familiar with Defender, that's an anti-malware client. So this is a cloud-hosted centralized platform for managing anti-malware scanning in a hybrid cloud environment. If you're using Office 365, there's lots of opportunities for an attacker to do all sorts of fun stuff, getting into users' exchange online email mailboxes, getting into OneDrive for business document data. So thus, Office 365 ATP protects and alerts against threats in that environment. In this lesson, we're dealing with Azure ATP, which, as I said, covers the local on-premises Active Directory environment. And lastly, there's Microsoft Cloud App Security, sometimes called by Microsoft MCAS, M-C-A-S. And that's a really compelling product because it is intended to prevent shadow IT. And that's where your employees are installing unauthorized applications. Let's say you're a Microsoft shop and you're using OneDrive for everybody. What's to prevent some of your employees from installing, say, Dropbox and activating their personal Dropbox on their company-issued computers and then copying company data from OneDrive to Dropbox? Cloud App Security can do a lot, but one thing it can do is proactively detect the applications that your users are using and you can prevent them from being used in the first place. All of the Microsoft Threat Protection Services take advantage of something called the Microsoft Intelligence Security Grant or ISG. A graph database is easy to understand if you're on social media. For example, you know how in Facebook you can have friends, and those friends can have friends, and those friends of friends have friends, and you may be connected to a friend's friend of a friend. 
This is a, almost a three-dimensional entity construct. That's a graph database. And when you think about all of the logic that Microsoft sees from all of their customers around the world, that's an enormous volume of sign-in data and network traffic and data access patterns. Microsoft runs machine learning algorithms against those data sets, and therefore the net result is that it can, through artificial intelligence, make accurate predictions on traffic patterns. That's what we've got going on here and is the main value proposition of using a cloud product like Azure Advanced Threat Protection, even if that's the only cloud solution you're using, that is everything else is on premises. All right, in this brief demonstration, I'm going to show you just a few bits of Azure Advanced Threat Protection. The first thing I want you to see, and it may be small on your screen, so I'll read the DNS name, is that we're in a totally separate portal here. We're at atp.azure.com. The first step, actually, is you create your Azure ATP tenant, and you give it a name. I called mine timwinfo.atp.azure.com, and you'll also need to have an Azure ATP license, which you can get through the Microsoft 365 licensing program. And this portal actually is eventually going to go away. You can see the banner says new investigation experience available, and if you click try it out, it takes you over here, which is portal.cloudappsecurity.com. Because of the customer confusion that's going on with all these different members of the Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection family, that Microsoft is trying to consolidate these different ATP products into a single portal. There's still separately a Windows Defender portal, but here in Cloud App Security, you can get to your advanced threat protection. Let me show you how that works. We can come up into settings, and we'll go to system settings. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we have a section here under threat protection called Azure ATP. And in order to integrate your ATP with Cloud App Security, all you have to do is flip this switch from off to on, and then you can do your configuration. So the highest level workflow for using Azure ATP is number one, you need to buy a license. Number two, you create a tenant and you can get to it initially, at least as of this recording in late July 2020, through the ATP portal. Although you can set everything up here in the old portal, as you can see we can go to the navigation menu and select configuration. Eventually, the only option is going to be able to work in the Cloud App Security console, which, of course, if you want to use Cloud App Security, is going to require a license for that as well. Always be selling, right? <laughs> but anyway, the next thing that I just want to make sure you understand is that Azure Advanced Threat Protection needs a way to connect to your local Active Directory environment. So number one, you have to provide a local credential that is an administrator account in your local AD environment. That's what you can see right here. I have a local AD domain called tim.info, and you can see that information here. Once you've established that credential and stored it in an ATP, you then deploy a sensor to your domain environment. And as you can see on the sensors page, you download the setup executable. And then when you run that on your local domain controllers, you then authenticate into your ATP Cloud Console with an access key that you can see here in the second. And we can look at some details on the device here. And then the rest of the original V1 ATP console, you can see that there's a section for detection because ultimately this is about notification and threat detection, isn't it? So for example, if we come under notification and reports, we can turn on mail notifications if a new alert is detected or a new health issue is detected, as you can see here. And then here we can come down to detections. And this is an empty instance. I mean, I just have an empty Active Directory domain, so there's nothing here. I did a Google image search just to show you what the timeline looks like in the Azure Advanced Threat Protection Portal when there is activity. So presumably you would be notified via email, but you can also see a timeline of different suspicious behaviors. And you can see a Honey Token is an account in your Active Directory that you create that has no privileges actually, but you name it in such a way that an attacker may be attracted to it. Like you might call the account local admin, or you might call the account domain admin, but really its group membership is very low. It's there as a honey token or an attractive force. And it shows here in the reports exactly who did what activities, and you can click into these reports and drill into them as you see. Last thing in Cloud App Security, as I was mentioning, 
you turn on advanced threat protection from the settings and you can configure your sensors and your directory service credentials from here as well. Going beyond that, we can see if we come out into the global navigation, we've got different categories here. A dashboard that just shows any alerts, any new software as a service apps that have been discovered, users that are showing up as suspicious that you should investigate, and you can click in to view specific reports on any of these categories. There's a huge library in cloud app security of different reports. Let me see if I can remember how to find it. Yeah, here it is in the Discover section if we come down to Cloud App Catalog. You'd be hard-pressed to find an application not in here. So, for example, I could do a search for Dropbox because I gave that idea earlier. And you can see that Microsoft gives a threat score to an application and then looks like there's categories of stuff you can do, like connectors to a SaaS application. And this one has a much lower confidence score. And the idea there, of course, is that you don't want users sending your protected corporate data into their personal Dropbox. So these are applications that you can either sanction or allow or unsanction and prevent. Your learning resources, first of all, to look at the Azure ATP Basics page, go to timw.info forward slash ATP1. If you're interested in Azure ATP's integration with Defender ATP, you can go to timw.info forward slash ATP2. And for integration guidance on Azure Advanced Threat Protection and Microsoft Cloud App Security, go to timw.info forward slash ATP3. Well, there you have it, another lesson down. In the next episode, we're going to go back to reviewing some high-priority Microsoft public websites that are necessary for your success on AZ-900. Specifically, we'll look at Microsoft Trust Center. In the meantime, please consider subscribing to this channel. You can follow me on Twitter at TechTrainerTim, view my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thank you very much. Happy studying to you.